Hello wonderful person, this is Anton, and today we're going to be discussing a relatively recent discovery of what essentially a lot of news articles have been referring to as the Forbidden Planet, which sort of reminded me of the movie by the same name. But it's definitely a catchy title, and it seems that every major article I've read so far kept using that particular term. But it could be a little bit misleading, and so in this video I wanted to discuss exactly what the scientists discovered, discuss what exactly makes this particular planet so forbidden, and discuss a few more discoveries that are actually extremely similar to this and have been made in the last few months. But I guess more importantly, discuss how all of this affects our understanding of the formation of planets. And so here, let's start with the discovery itself. So what exactly is this unusual planet and what makes it so forbidden? This was one of the discoveries from the NASA's test mission, the telescope that was essentially responsible for discovering as many exoplanets as possible. But its primary mission was always really meant to discover planets around red dwarfs, not so much anything else. And so specifically, it was always looking for planets that would orbit around a star within maybe a few weeks, maybe a month at most, but as far as I know, none of the planets discovered here have an orbital period anything similar to planet Earth, or more importantly, are orbiting stars similar to our Sun. It did make some exciting discoveries, including certain black holes, but so far, none of the planets discovered here would be considered to be very Earth-like. And since the main focus were red dwarfs, or the most common type of a star in our galaxy, representing approximately 80% of all of the stars discovered so far, stars similar to Proxima Centauri, the nearest star to us, the scientists have always expected that a lot of planets here would most likely be terrestrial, and potentially even somewhat similar to planets like Venus and Mars. And that's because generally, since the mass of these stars is much lower than the mass of our Sun, it's a lot more likely that a lot of these stars would contain much smaller planets as well, since they wouldn't really have enough mass to create larger gas giants. In other words, finding an object like Jupiter or Saturn around these types of stars would practically be impossible. And that's of course because of the way that scientists believe planets develop around various protoplanetary disks. Based on hundreds of different disks discovered by various modern telescopes like ALMA, the telescope located in Chile, over time the scientists worked out a kind of a relationship between a star in the center and the disk itself. Naturally, the more massive the star, the more likely it's going to have more mass in the disk, and at the same time, the more likely the disk will actually stay around the star a little bit longer, being able to produce much larger, more massive planets. Whereas smaller disks and smaller stars tend to end up with smaller planets. And though some planets could be maybe Earth-like in terms of mass, even discovering a Neptune-like object that's about 15 to 20 masses of planet Earth, for the most part, is believed to be extremely unlikely. Although these types of planets, in theory, could exist somewhere on the outskirts. And since the red dwarfs are most likely to have terrestrial planets in their orbit, this is exactly why the test mission decided to mostly focus on the red dwarf stars. Here the scientists were hoping to discover as many terrestrial planets as possible in a relatively short time. And they were pretty successful so far. Oh, the one major mystery that came out of all of this is that even though red dwarfs represent 80% of all of the stars in our galaxy, for the most part they only seem to contain approximately 10% of all of the planets discovered. Which is a bit of a problem because it means that most planets do not seem to actually be around red dwarfs. Or maybe this is just some kind of a statistical bias that we cannot explain just yet. Either way, for many years now the scientists always believed that we're going to find a lot of terrestrial objects around red dwarfs and pretty much nothing else. But then the scientists took a look at this star, Toei 5205, that seemed to contain a planet that was almost the same in mass and in size as our own Jupiter. Or more intriguingly, represented approximately 0.3% of the total mass of the entire star system, which is dramatically higher than Jupiter compared to the Sun. Our Sun is approximately 1200 times more massive than Jupiter, and is definitely a lot larger as well. But more intriguingly, this was also a planet that was relatively close to the parent star. When it passed in front of the star, it blocked the light by about 7%, the largest transit discovered so far, which is already super super exciting for so many reasons. One of the main reasons is because this is going to allow scientists to study the atmosphere of this planet extremely well. It's going to be very very easily visible, and so it's most likely going to be the next target for the James Webb. A few months ago, the James Webb Space Telescope was able to see the atmosphere of WASP-39b, and this was a planet with a much, much lower transit. So we can only imagine what sort of a quality we're going to have when it does look at this planet in the future. But of course, the biggest mystery is the size of this planet. 
It's actually about one fourth of the size of the star itself, and because the current models cannot really explain its formation history, everybody started referring to it as the Forbidden Planet. Or basically a planet that should really not exist at all. And that's because normally we expect a planet to start formation by first creating some kind of a foundation out of rocky material, in case of planets like Jupiter possibly around 10 Earth masses, which then serves as a core for the entire gas giant around it. But in these smaller disks around red dwarfs, the scientists believe that there shouldn't really be enough material to do any of this. And on top of this, these disks should disappear much quicker than it should be possible for the planet to form. Which means that this planet, since it exists, must have formed really really quickly, and the disk itself very likely contained a lot more matter. But it also means that the current understanding of planetary formation is very likely extremely incomplete, and there is really important evidence for that. As I mentioned, quite a lot of these disks have been discovered in the last few years, many of them containing extremely different properties, but in some cases there were actually signs of planets forming in regions nobody expected. But much more importantly, this is not the first such object discovered around a red dwarf. Or not the first and definitely not the last forbidden planet. Three years ago, another study took a look at another star system known as GG3512, discovering yet another gas giant once again in orbit around a red dwarf. This one was not as massive as Jupiter, maybe about half its mass, but it's also much closer to us, which means that we can investigate it much easier. Here the distance is just over 30 light years, whereas for this new planet, it's more than 250 light years away from planet Earth. And so even three years ago, this already created a bit of a problem. It means that these planets can definitely form around red dwarfs, but at the moment nobody knows how. But even this was not the strangest discovery. Just a few months ago, in October of 2022, the scientists have actually discovered something else even weirder. They refer to this as the Marshmallow Planet. It was also a gas giant, also around a red dwarf, but in this case it was extremely expanded, extremely poofy, and possessed very very low density. It was about four times less dense than Jupiter. And so they refer to this as the Marshmallow Planet, Toy 3757b. And that essentially implied that these unusual gas giants seem to definitely exist and moreover, they seem to definitely orbit around typical red dwarfs and sometimes even possess very exotic features. But how exactly they formed around red dwarfs at the moment cannot be explained at all. And though it's possible some of them might have been captured, based on their relatively close orbits, that's also extremely unlikely. So in this case, just like with the observations from the James Webb, where the scientists started to discover that we just don't understand how early galaxies were formed because of all of the recent discoveries of well-developed, relatively massive galaxies, it's quite possible that something similar is happening here. Something is causing these planets to develop into more massive objects, and possibly using various effects we just don't understand. Maybe related to magnetic fields, maybe related to the interaction with nearby stars, or possibly something entirely different we just don't understand yet. Which means that the mystery of forbidden planets is still going to remain a mystery for at least a few years. But I'm pretty certain more of these planets will be discovered in the next few years, because it does seem like the gas giants around red dwarfs, which the scientists believe to be impossible for a pretty long time, are quite possible after all, and some of them are a lot stranger than we thought. And so we'll definitely come back and talk more about this once the scientists figure out exactly what's going on in these systems. And so yeah, it is I guess a forbidden planet, but not the only one out there. But if you'd like to learn about other mysterious planets discovered in the last few years, check out some of the videos in the description. Thank you for watching, subscribe, share this with someone who has learned about space and sciences, come back tomorrow to learn something else, and maybe support this channel on Patreon by joining channel membership or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye-bye.